give us peace knowing that, Father, because some of us, we have stuff going on, and we have things that we're dealing with, Father, and, and sometimes we think so much about those that it just kind of interrupts other things, Father. But I pray, Lord, that in this moment, you'd give us peace, reminding us that you're in control and you're bigger, Father. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hey, as you're sitting down, tell somebody he's bigger. Tell somebody next to you. Yeah. Because it's true that God is bigger. Um, We're in uh, part four of our series that we've called uh, real life, real answers, and how many have been through just, how many know when somebody says real life, that kind of means a lot of things, right? Real life means that there's some things that have happened in my life that I'm uh, proud of, and there's some things that have happened in my life that I'm not really proud of, right? There's some struggles in my life that, that I, I, uh, I'm dealing with, and there's some things that, man, I, I wish uh, would happen over and over and over again, right? That's kind of real life, and with real life comes questions. And with questions comes, and and especially if you're somebody who has been a part of the church for a while, or you're coming to church for the first time, or you're listening online, welcome, uh, by the way, um, that when when you intersect God with real life, and then you start hearing things that God says, and you compare those to real life, sometimes those answers don't always line up in your head, right? You're like, okay, so if God is all loving, and he can do anything, like I've heard all those preachers say, then why is there pain and suffering in the world? And we, de- we dealt with that a few weeks ago. We talked about why uh, that is, and why that's, God still permits that while he still is uh, all loving and all powerful and, and uh, ever able to do anything. And so if you missed that, you can go online to our website and click on media and watch it, uh, what we call on-demand videos, right? You can have video, or you can have uh, Pastor Bethel in your living room anytime, right? He'll, 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 he'll pay. By the way, last week was amazing, right? So last week, uh, I, I talked to, uh, to Pastor Bethel right before church and I told him, man, that's as good as it gets when you're answering those types of questions, you know, and biblically uh, in a way that, that gives truth, but in a loving way. And so um, we are very <clears throat> blessed and fortunate to have you. And we thank you so much for that message without, without question. Uh, and we also talked about um, uh, if we can trust the Bible. And that's a huge question. These are all questions, by the way, that serve two purposes. The first one is we want to know some better answers to these questions, right? Because we want to know why we can trust the Bible, right? We want to know why there's pain and suffering. We want to know what does the Bible say about drinking and tattoos and alcohol and this and that. We want to know all that stuff, right? But it also serves a second reason because even if you already believed that, you know, what, what we were teaching, it, it kind of lines up with your faith, you need to know it because God says we should be prepared when somebody else asks us. Because if we have those questions and we already have faith in God, how much more do people outside of here have those same questions that are seeking God or potentially not coming to God because they're saying, I can't go to church because I just can't figure out why God would allow that to have happened in my life, to my mom, to my dad, to my marriage, right? And, and I can't equate love with the pain that I've dealt with. Or, or the Bible is just another book. Or, or, or God doesn't like homosexuality. Or he hates this or hates like. We, we need to find the answers because we need to be able to tell others. In fact, um, in First Peter, if you have your bulletin, if not, it, it, we're going to show you the scriptures on, on, on the board. In First Peter, God says this. Uh, um, and if someone asks about your hope as a what? As a believer, somebody who believes in Jesus, who has has responded to him, always be ready to explain it. So so part of our job, and and, and in particular, uh, Pastor Bethel and I, one of our main jobs here at the church is to equip you. It's not so that we can become the know-it-alls and we can become the big talking heads and, well, just call the pastor, he'll know. You know, just, just to tell him he'll go pray. Just tell him he'll go, do, he'll go do that, right? No, but the body of Christ, our job is to actually equip the body of Christ. That way you guys are ready, right? And everybody who listens to the podcast is ready. Everybody who watches us on our website is ready so that we can all change the world together. So it serves those two reasons, and there all these questions are huge, especially today's question um, that we're going to answer and to the best of our ability. Why doesn't God answer all of my prayers. How many have ever asked that question? 
why doesn't God answer all my prayers? How many have had a prayer answered before? And you're like, yeah, like, love it, right? We know what that feels like. We know we're like, God, that, that worked, you know? It's a, like, it's like whatever we did or whatever he said or however we prayed, something connected, he, it got past the ceiling of my house, right? And it went into heaven and he answered and he responded. And that's, a, that's, a, that's a, such a good feeling, but there's times where it doesn't happen, right? And I remember um, a few years ago when, when Evie and I were uh, still dating, and uh, I, Jose was seven at the time, Jose Luis, uh, her son. And, and so he, he, you know, he's learning. I'm teaching him how to pray. And one of the first things I do, because I'm like, Lord, this is going to be my family one day, so I'm going to, you know, teach them some things, you know. So, no, I, I, I started praying when we would eat together. I'd say, well, let's pray, you know. So we'd start it out by just praying for our food uh, anytime we would be together. And then uh, little by little, I'd say, Jose, why don't, you know, why don't you say the prayer? And, you know, you're not seven year old. You know, they don't, they don't want to say nothing. Little by little, he started praying, you know, for the food. Then um, <clears throat> what would happen is we, since, you know, uh, I, I'm a pastor and I, I, I hear about a lot of things that go on. We would get calls every once in a while. I'd get a call, a text that somebody's in the hospital, somebody needs prayer, somebody's sick. And I remember um, Lawrence, um, his accident and, and his heart attack uh, when, when that happened. And I remember um, Jose and I and, and Evie, we prayed for you every day. We said, God, would you heal him? God, would you keep him? God, would you? And God did that. God did that. And, 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 his, uh, and it was one of the first times that, that Jose Luis that really saw that prayer matters. You know, and it wasn't just, God, thank you for the food and thank you for your provision. But it was, God, help, help do something for somebody that we have no control over. We, we don't know. Then we got the, the call from Pastor Bethel when he got into his motorcycle accident. And we said, Lord, help him. And, pray. and we would pray every day for you, man. And God kept you and he sustained you and you're still recovering and you're, you're still with us. And we, and we love you, man. And, and so we, we would have these prayer requests. And, and so it was, it was almost like we had this high batting average, right? right? You know, it's like we're, we're knocking them all out of the park because it seems like every prayer request that's coming in, home run, they're being answered, right? And, and, you know, as we know, God doesn't always answer the way we want him to answer. And sometimes um, things don't go the way we want them to go. And I remember a little over a year ago when, when Amy had gotten sick with cancer. And we all remember Amy Islas. And right away, we began to pray for her. And Jose would say, God, you know, help Amy's body and, and heal her and everything. And, and we would just pray and pray. And, and, and God chose to take her. And that was one of those conversations that I had to have with him for the first time that God chose different. And, and helping him understand. And, and that's something that I want us all to understand today is, is not only is prayer important, um, and here's how important it is. Even if you don't believe in God, and, and I, I ask people all the time, or people ask me rather, hey, would you, would you pray for me? Or I'll just say sometimes when I hear something that's going on, and I don't even know if they believe in God. It might be at the gym or somewhere, and they'll, they'll tell me that something's going on, and I'll just say, hey, I'll pray for you. And they'll, look at, they'll give me that look and the like, Never thought of that or I don't do that, but thank you. Because there's something that happens. There's this, you know, even when you, you're not, you wouldn't consider yourself close to God, you would say that when somebody prays for you, there's something just, this peace that comes or just something that turns inside of you, right? Knowing that you made the call, knowing that somebody's thinking about you, knowing that somebody's saying, God, on, on their behalf, would you help them today? Would you give them strength? Would you, would you heal them? Would you uh, how, give them the courage to, to face this divorce or this, this, uh, this battle that they're going through? And there's something that God does, the loss of, of, of a life. And God does that. And we've all had people in our lives um, that were sick and we prayed and God either did something or we feel like he didn't, right? 
And, and we all, we've all had uh, the, the, the times in our lives where uh, I, need a, I need a new job and it just seems like nothing's happening. I'm praying and, and I'm not enough income's coming in or I just need to get some kind of income coming in and it doesn't work. Or we pray for our children and maybe, maybe they're, they're sick or they're, they're a little bit older, they're getting into trouble and we're just like, you know, I, I just, I, I need something to happen here. Uh, maybe it's a, a new home. Maybe it's for, you, maybe you remember younger uh, for your parents or maybe even now you, you prayed that your parents would stay together and it didn't look like they were going to stay together. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't, but you prayed for that. Maybe you prayed um, for a long time that you would have a child, you and your spouse together and it just doesn't seem like it was going to happen. And for some of us, and, and I told our first service, I hope this isn't your prayer, but if you are, if you do have a spouse, don't pray for a new one, okay? All right, don't, don't pray. Don't, give, don't, don't ask, uh, give me a new one, all right? Don't go, um, don't, but, and, and <laughs> go to the marriage retreat, right, on June, June. That's a little plug right there. Um, so uh, maybe, but here's, the, here's what happens. Here's what happens, and here's what I want to address today. Sometimes, sometimes we even, our faith gets rattled because we just don't know why we're not getting an answer, And over time, when you pray for something long enough and nothing happens or you feel like nothing's going on, over time, you just kind of give up. And here's a good example of that. How many know somebody who just doesn't know God and you wish wish they really would? Like we all do, right, if we're honest. And and how many can remember at one time praying for them and saying, man, I, I just wish God, please reach them, do something. And how many can also remember, if we're honest, that I haven't, I haven't done that forever, I know they don't go to church, or I know that they are far from God, but I, I just kind of don't pray for them. I did at the beginning, or I did, you know, a month ago, but I kind of don't anymore, right? And we kind of, it's kind of a natural reaction, a kind of natural thing that happens, because over time, our faith tends to decrease in certain areas, and I, wanna, I want us to learn today that, that that doesn't have to be the case. And I want to answer uh, uh, at least in five ways why our prayers may or may not be answered when we take things before God, okay? At least five. There's probably more ways, and I can't answer all those in between or what about. You know, Jose Luis is great at that. You know, you you tell him, you know, let's, let's, we're going to drive this way to school. What what about if we go that way? You know what I mean? Like, we we never went that way, but what if we did, you know? I'm like, what? Like, no, so no what abouts or no what ifs, okay? We're just going to stick to the, <laughs> to this here and, and, and move uh, forward with that. But here, let, let's start. We're going to go through the, first, through the first one here right, right now. First one on your notes is maybe you have a broken relationship, okay? And let me, before I continue, we always have ground rules, right? Ground rules, we're going to stick to the Bible. The other one is no elbows in church, okay? So no elbows or no, no death looks, okay? None of that. All right. So maybe you have a, a broken relationship, and this is so amazing. In Mark chapter um, um, 11 verses 24 through 25. And, and I, I skipped to the second verse there on your notes. But here, here we are, Mark 11, 24, 25. I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you'll, you've received it, it will be what? It will be yours. Here's the thing. But when you are praying first, what? Forgive anyone you are holding a, grun- a grudge against so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. Okay, so how many have ever heard that scripture before? Like, I, I just, how many have ever said, I don't even get what he's trying, what God's trying to say right there because it just seems like God should forgive me and love me anyway, even though I can't deal with my brother, right? Or I can't deal with my, my spouse. It feels like God should just be listening to me anyway. This is telling me he may, he might not be, right? Here, here's something that, and you hear us say, Craig and Andy, you, you, here's something that Craig said, Craig Rochelle said, that I love and I kind of hold on to. He said this, and it's in your notes, your horizontal relationships, okay, because we're talking about how your, a, a broken relationship might be the cause of a disconnect with God. Your horizontal relationship affects your vertical relationship, okay? So how we treat each other here on earth how we treat our kids, how we treat our spouse, how we um, act uh, towards others directly affects how we connect with God. 
Here's a couple more scriptures to give us a little bit more uh, evidence of that. Um, Matthew chapter 5, verses 23 and 24 says, So if you're presenting a sacrifice at the altar in the temple and you suddenly remember that someone has something against you, kind of the other way around, leave your sacrifice there at the altar, go and be reconciled to that person, then come and offer your sacrifice to God. So he's given another example. If, if the first one was, if you have something against somebody, if somebody has something against you is the second one, then you should go fix that before you come before God. God's saying that's the best thing to do. That's the best thing to do. And then, and, and then the, the next example here in 1 Peter 3, 7 says, in that same way, you husbands must give honor to your wives. Treat your wife with understanding as you live together. And the women said... Amen. Okay. So <laughs> work with me here. Uh, um, she, may be the we- she may be weaker than you are, but she is your equal partner in God's gift of new life. Treat her, uh, treat her as you should, so your prayers, what, will not be hindered. Oh, so we have three different examples of how relationships here on earth can affect our relationship and our, in particular, our communication with God. So how does that work? And why does it work that way? Let me give you just a story to kind of, to kind of help you understand this, okay? If, if, how many have more than one kid that, that one, that's here? So let's say you have your children, okay, and you come home and one of your kids, they, um, for whatever miracle of God, okay, they come home and they do their homework and they clean their room, and they take out the trash, right? And they do everything that you wish they would do all the time without you telling, having to tell them like 15 times, right? Um, and they do it all. And you're just like, what in the world is, you know, did, did, did you get swapped at school with somebody who looks like you or what, what happened, right? And so they're doing everything, okay? And, and then they come up to you and they say, mom or dad, um, can I go out and play? And you're like, well, did you? And before you could even say anything, they're like, I did my homework. You could check it if you want. It was kind of easy today. They're telling you that. And, and, I, and I cleaned my room. And you go over there and you're like, it, it even smells good because I'm telling you, it doesn't always smell good. You know, uh, I took out the trash. They did everything that you said. And you're just like, why not? You know, like you, who wouldn't say, yeah, go ahead and play. You did everything. But before they leave out the door, you have younger sister or, or older brother coming in crying saying, he's always picking on me. He's never leaving me alone. He's always beating me up. He just punched me in the head just now. Do you think that would change your decision to let them do to go out and play if they're not getting, if they're beating up their brother or their brother is, is crying or being, you know, brotherly abused, right? Probably. How many have ever changed plans? You were on your way and you decided to take a U-turn because nobody was getting along in the car, right? We're not going. You even wanted to go. You're like, damn, I don't want her to go, you know, and we're not going. Like, because... When there's no peace in the family, whoever's in charge has to make decisions about that. Right? And so God is saying, your relationships here on earth, how you interact with each other, with your spouse, with people who you hold grudges against, that you can't get along with, or they can't get along with you, or there's just stuff going on, God's saying, you need to work on that. Because if you're the body, if, if, if you're my representatives here on earth and you're not getting along and you're still asking me for stuff, I think we need to start with plan one, for we, with, with, with one before we get to two, right? You see how that works? And, and God's saying, fix some stuff. Your, your relationship, your, maybe you have a broken relationship and God's saying, you know what? I know you want this. And I know you need this, but what you need more right now is a great relationship with your brother. What you need more right now than anything is for you and your, your wife or your husband to just go out on a date and, and spend some time together. That's really more important than, than what you're asking me for in this moment. What do you think? God's a lot smarter than we are, right? He really is. Um, here's another one. Maybe you have the wrong motives. How many have ever uh, prayed something real selfish? God, I want her, right? 
God, I want him, right? I, God, I, this is what I want, right? Here, here's, here's what James says. James 4, 3 says, And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all what? Wrong. They're wrong. You, only, you want only what will give you pleasure. How many have ever been selfish like that? God, I want this for me. I like this color. I like this size. I like this style, right? I want this. I want this. I want this. Why can't I get it? Me, me. And have you ever noticed this? Have you ever noticed that somebody who becomes self-centered um, tends to push everybody else out of their life because they're out for what they want? And you know that. Maybe you've been in a relationship that's like that. And you're like, man, I, all I do is for them and all they want is for them and all they want, da, 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 da. And you're just like, what about me? You know, like it, it, it tends to cause tension you know, in, in the relationship when it's only about the person, their needs, and not giving that back and not, not loving them. And so God's saying when you ask, your motives are all wrong. When we ask for things that are self-centered, I want, I have this, but I want a bigger one, Right? I've got a nice car, but I want a bigger, better one. I've got this, but I want that. I want this, but I want that. And it's just God saying, here, here's the thing. When, when Christians believe this, and, and maybe you're still learning about God, or maybe you've been a Christian a while and you didn't realize this, but when you give your life to Christ, you're saying, God, I can't do it anymore, and I surrender my dependency to you. And I want you to give me what's best. I'm not going to try to tell you what I want and what's best for me. I actually want you to tell me what's best for me. I actually want you to teach me, God. It, it, this is what I, you know, God, I like this or I would want that, but is this the best for me? And is, is this, you know, and if it is, God, would you, would you do that for me? And see, the thing is, as we get closer to God, the more we realize some of the things that we wanted before just kind of don't matter. And some of the things that are more important, like our relationships and our kids and our education and our job and our provision, like those things kind of stand out a little bit more than the things that used to. Because God changes our heart over time. And so maybe our motives are wrong. Maybe that's why. Um, here's something I do know about God in Proverbs 16 two says, people may have, be pure in their own eyes, okay? But the Lord examines their motives. How many have ever done that? That you're almost deceiving yourself. Well, I, I know the reason why I really want him. You know what I mean? I, I know. I know. And, and God's like, don't lie to yourself. You know? Don't, don't, don't put on, I really know what's behind that request. And again, and I use kids as an example, and I use family because it's the most relatable. But parents, you know when, when your son or daughter is being a little extra affectionate, right? They're being extra nice. They're doing things you didn't ask them to do. And, and all of a sudden you're like, what do you want, right? <laughs> there's, some, there's some motives behind this. There's some intention behind your, your actions. Next one, maybe you don't believe God will do it. It's another reason why sometimes God may not answer your prayer. There's a story in the Bible of a man um, who brings his son to Jesus, and his, man, and his son uh, had been uh, possessed by a demon ever since he was young. And every once in a while, he would, th this demon would throw him on the ground, and he would convulse, and, and, and there would be um, saliva and spit coming out. And, and he was, like any parent, tired of this happening to his, his son, so he hears about Jesus. He hears about the miracles that, that Jesus performs. He finds Jesus. And here's what he says. He tells them all about his son. And then in verse 22, he says, have mercy on us and help us. And then he says this, if you can. He's talking to Jesus, the son of God, the creator of the universe. If you can, okay? And Jesus responds, what, what do you mean if I can, Jesus asked. And I don't think Jesus said that in, in a, that was a dumb question or that was, that was you know, to belittle him or make him feel um, um, dumb or anything like that. I think Jesus might have said it like, 
What do you mean if, if I can? And then he, he told him, anything is possible if a person believes. And, you know, you get that Jesus in your head from AD. The, the Bible continues, that big smiling Jesus, you know. And what do you, anything's possible if you believe. And Jesus ended up healing uh, this, this, uh, his son who was possessed by this demon. And here's what we learned from that. This man had been praying potentially for years for his son. And, and this kept happening over and over again. And he would pray and pray and pray. And after a while, it was almost like he couldn't believe. And if you continue to read those scriptures, the, the guy actually says, he goes, help me overcome my disbelief. And we've all been there because we've prayed for things at certain times in our lives where this has to change. This relationship has to get better or I have to find one or I have to, this, this, this marriage or, or this financial situation or whatever that looks like for you, you've prayed for years and years and years and it doesn't change. And after a while, it's like, God, if, if, if you even listen it anymore, if you can, if, if you care, if you can, you know, can you help me? And, 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 and it's, our, our faith takes a beating sometimes when we feel like nothing's happening. But in this story, we, we learn that not only do we have to continue to, be, to, to, to pray for what it is, but God has the perfect time. And Jesus came in at that time. I mean, think about that. This, this guy could have been born at any, in any time time of the history of the world he happened to be born with his son who happened to be demon possessed the very time that god sent his son jesus to the earth and they got to meet face to face can you imagine that and god had his perfect time and so if you're struggling with something and you feel like you you, you you've lost faith in a certain area because i can't get over this or this isn't changing or that this story would remind us that god has a time for your miracle and God has a time for that he's going to change and, and answer that. Um, for some of us, there, there's another example in, in James where God says if you ask for wisdom um, or if you're asking for wisdom, God alone can give this. And, and, and here, here's another example of how Maybe you don't believe God will do it. In verse uh, 6 and 7 of James chapter 1, it says, Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. So here's an, another way that we kind of tell God we don't believe that you will do it is we ask God, but we're asking everybody else too. And so we're saying, God, would you help but let me go talk to uh, uh, my neighbor who, who doesn't even believe in God, who, who can care less, who every third word is the F-bomb, you know what I mean? Who, 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 you, who has no clue that what God would say in this situation, but we're, are, we're dividing where we're getting our information from instead of just saying, God, I believe you. It's like Pastor Bethel said last week, we go to the Bible, we believe what the Bible says. We believe what God says above man, above, above whatever, whoever else. And so James is clearly saying, you shouldn't expect to receive anything. If you're going to ask me, ask me. But don't, don't try to get an answer from me and then an answer from, from the guy who doesn't even acknowledge me. Because then your answers are divided, right? The most common place you'll see that is online and social media. Somebody will put something online about a prayer request or about something that's going on, and you'll get all these different, different advice, you know, all this different stuff coming from all over the place. And I think that's exactly what James was saying. Somebody was saying, ah, just leave him, ah, forget him. Oh, pr I'll pray for you. Ah, you know, and there's all this, this big thread of opinions. And God's saying, just, just come to me. And parents, again, you would know if your kids came to you for the solution and you had the solution to their problem and they come to you and they say, Dad, I need help on, on, on how to fix the car. And you're like, it's easy, son, do this, right? He goes, yeah, but, but my friend Robert said that, you know what I mean? And, you, and you're thinking to yourself, you're going to blow the engine if you do what your friend Robert says, right? 
But don't ask me then, right? Don't ask me. If you're not going to listen, then don't. Same thing, right? Same thing, right? God is, that's God, right? And so maybe you don't believe God will do it or you don't fully believe he has the answer. So maybe you, next have you, um, maybe you haven't done your part. It's a big one. Because I know, I, growing up in the church, I, I would see all the time people saying, oh, I'm praying. Sitting at home and praying, right? Right? Need the job, but we'll see what happens. Praying about it, you know? Here, here's uh, uh, what happened in the Bible. How many remember Moses and, and the whole story of when he, God uses him to deliver uh, the Israelites out of Egypt, right? And God calls him. And Moses, he has his struggles or whatever, but he finally goes and he goes before the Pharaoh and his brother Aaron's helping him. And, and he does, you know, God finally, through a course of miracles, uh, re- uh, liberates, frees um, Israel. And so there's Moses leading them, you know, with this cane. He's doing his part, right? He went before Pharaoh. He talked to the Pharaoh. He, he, he cast vision to Israel. He told them what they were going to do. He told them when they were going to do it. He led the way. He did his part. And then remember when, when um, they got backed up against the Red Sea? They're like, what do I do now, right? What do I do now? Here, here's what happened in Exodus 14, 13 through 14. But Moses told the people, don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians will see today The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. The Lord himself will fight for you to stay calm. See, Moses did his part. He responded to God's call and he said, all right, I'm going to go to to, to Egypt. I'm going to lead him. I'm going to talk to the Pharaoh. I'm going to do what you tell me to do. But then he gets into a situation where I can't do anything. They're behind us. The army's coming after us and we're against the Red Sea, we're stuck. And God says, because you've done your part, I'm going to do my part. Because you've obeyed me, because you've got this far, just stand still right now and watch me do what only I can do that you can never do. And and so for some of us, we, we want the job. We want the relationship. We, we, we want to eat healthier. We want to look better. We, we want a better uh, life, so whatever it is, but we don't do anything about it. And we have all the intentions of the world of drawing closer to God, but we don't ever read the Bible. We have all the intentions of, of, of the world in, 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 uh, in the world to, to better our marriage, but we don't go to the marriage retreat on the 13th or 14th, right? We, we have all the intentions in the world to, to um, uh, drop a few pounds or, or eat better because something's going on, but we don't change anything about our diet or our exercise routine. And our intentions, as good as they are, won't get us anywhere. And God is saying, do your part, and I'll do my part. You start eating different, and I'll give you the strength to continue that route. You start praying for your son or for your daughter or for uh, the the situation. You pray, and I'm going to do the thing that you can't do and, and work in his heart or their heart. You keep filling out applications and the right job will open up because I'll put it on the heart of the employer to hire you. And so sometimes um, we don't get our prayers answered because we don't do our part. We need to do our part. You'll never meet anybody who, who says that or who, who gets the megaphone, megaphone and says that louder than Evie. Because she hears all the stories when I get calls or emails or texts, she'll be like, what have they done about it? <laughs> like, easy, <laughs> easy, you know? And uh, so don't ask her. She's, I have a little more grace than, no. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a little, you know. Here's the last one here. Maybe God has something different, okay? And th- let's bring it home here. 
Maybe, maybe God has something different. Um, 1 John 5, 14 through 15 says, and we are confident that he hears us. Whenever we ask for anything that pleases him, and that's the key right there, that pleases him. And since we know he hears us when we make our requests, we also know that he will give us what we ask for. And see, as you draw closer to God and as you seek the right uh, 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 counsel, you'll begin to know what pleases God. You'll begin to know that this is something that, that I know pleases God and God, this is something that I need your response with. And this, that's when God starts working. God, I know you, you love my son. I, I want him to, to come back home or I want, them, I want him to, to work on, on, on his school or get back into school or get better grades or whatever it is. God, I, I, I know that. There's a really familiar story in the Bible uh, about a king named Nebuchadnezzar. And he got to the point in his life where he thought that whatever he said was just like it. He, like he was God on earth. And so he decided to make this golden statue. And he decided that I'm going to make a decree that in all the land, everybody must bow to this statue and no other God because it's the one I made. And if they don't, I've already prepared this fiery furnace, if you remember that story growing up. And whoever doesn't bow to this golden idol statue that I'm making, we're going to just burn them alive. And so Israel, they were, they were, they were, being in, they were in captivity in, uh, under the Babylonians at that time. And Daniel had raised up three uh, boys that loved God. And they were actually working with the king. Their names were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. How many remember that story? Interesting names if you've never heard that story. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three guys refused to bow. They said, no, we, we serve God. And, and the thing is, is they could have just bowed just to save their life and nobody would have, have ever known. They could have just been in the crowd. I'll just bow real quick. I don't want to go. I don't want to get burnt, you know. But they didn't even want to do that. They said, we only bow to God. Our allegiance is to God. It's not divided. It's not, all right, I'll do this to escape, but God, I still believe in you. This was a life or death decision that they made. Because back then, they didn't mess around. And so the king finds out that they're not going to bow down. He calls them, and he's furious. He's like, you know what I said. You know the decree. You know what's going to happen to you. Here's their response in Jan Daniel 3. 17 and 18, he says, if we're thrown into the blazing furnace, then God, whom we serve, is what? Is able to save us. We, that song was playing while we were greeting, God is able. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty, your, your power, your majesty, even being respectful in his, their response. But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, and you could just imagine them looking into the king's eyes. We want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue that you've set up. That's faith right there. That's faith saying that, that we, we, this is outside of our hands. There's a power on this earth. There's a government on this earth that has a potential to, to end our lives we're going to do what we know what's, we're going to do what we can and stand our ground on our faith. That's as far as they can get. We're not going to do it. We're going to stay still. We're going to serve God. We're not moving. We're not bowing. And even if God doesn't, we know he has the power to do it, but even if he doesn't, we're not going to bow. And if you remember the story, they end up getting thrown into the furnace. And when the king looks in from a distance, and this thing was so hot that the people throwing them into the furnace actually died because they got too close to it. This big, big oven. And when the king looked in to just hopefully see them collapse or 
dissolve into ashes, he saw a fourth person in there. And the Bible says that was God with them. It was like the Son of God was with them in that moment. And when they got out, they didn't even smell like ashes. They didn't even, their clothes didn't even smell like fire. They had been through it, but you would never know, right? And that's what God does. We go through the fire, but Lawrence, we would never know, man. We would never know. You look stronger than you ever have, man. We would never know. And God does these things. He does these things. And so here's where I want to land. It's your last three, three points. I believe God can. And this should be our prayer. I believe God will. But even if he doesn't, what? I still believe. Can we say that together, those three things? I believe God can. I believe God will. And even if he doesn't, I still believe. Can we just thank God this morning? Um, let, let's pray right where we're at. Lord, we, um, we do believe. Lord, and we... Um, we're blown away, Father, by, by your word and by your faithfulness and by your love and, Lord, by uh, how you move in our hearts each week, Lord, as we, as we come ready to learn more and invest more into our own lives, Father, so that we can, we can be better uh, representatives of you, Father. We can be better uh, husbands. We can be better wives. We can be better fathers and, and mothers. And, and Lord, we, we <laughs> can get closer to you, Lord. And Lord, today, as we've learned about prayer, I pray, my prayer for us is that whatever one of these points touched a nerve with, with one of us here, Father, I pray that they would have the courage to start putting that into practice, Father. Maybe some of us here haven't prayed for those uh, that need to know you forever. Lord, would today serve as a reminder to continue to do that? Maybe some of us haven't done our part and we just really really want something or we want change but we don't make change happen we don't do our part i pray lord that you would uh you would give us the strength to change take those steps and lord i pray that lord if it is something different that we would be faithful enough to accept that lord that if you don't physically heal the person that we want healed and you choose to heal them by taking them to be with you in heaven, I pray that we would still believe and we would still accept your response, Father. Lord, I pray that our faith in you would not be divided between the world and what your word says, Lord, but we would stick to your word. Lord, help us. Lord, your, your word also tells us, Father, that before you left, you got with all the disciples, you sat down with them, you had dinner with them, Father. And you told them, as you broke bread and as you, as, as you passed around the cup, Father, that the bread would represent your body that would be broken and that the cup would represent your blood that would be shed. And Lord, I pray this morning that as we're learning about prayer and as we're learning how to respond and as we're learning how to obey you, Father, that we would, um, as a church, be able to take communion and remember why it is that we're even here and why we even get the opportunity to learn more. And it's because of what, Jesus, it's because of what you did on the cross. So God, um, would you prepare our hearts as we Get ready to take communion. In your name we pray. Amen. Could we stand? And I want to go ahead and invite you, uh, everyone, to come forward and get a cup and, and a piece of bread. And while you're doing that, um, Renee's going to play a video called Pray, and I want you to just kind of listen to the words.